And I'd like to introduce our MC for today, Nick Komen of Dragonfly Dye Works. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. How are you? Oh, come on. Okay, are you excited for a fashion show? Okay, without further ado, let's get started. First, we have a challenge dress. This is by Niall Mendoza Wilson of the Central Pennsylvania chapter. Our first one is by land, and, uh, I'm sorry, our first one if by land, two if by sea challenge is a dress inspired by an 1885 House of Worth gown. With only photos as her guide, Niall altered patterns from truly Victorian to recreate this garment. The day dress has a tail bodice. This was a perfect stash clearing project for Niall. <laughs> I want her stash. <laughs> Niall was finally able to use that bolt of upholstery fabric she impulsively bought at a yard sale. <laughs> Thank you, Niall. Wow. Next we have Lynn Wall's Boston chapter. Lynn's proud to live in Massachusetts and wanted to celebrate some of the things that make living here great. She <laughs> Nicole's, I'm sorry, in Nicole's pattern, 6102, to make this cotton fabric pullover dress and converted it to a reversible dress just for our one if by land and two if by sea challenge this year. The side is made of four panels. It's a tribute to the exciting sports teams in Massachusetts. Can you guess what the other side will be? <laughs> Next, we have Carrie Emerson, the Maryland chapter. And Carrie is wearing a fit for art pattern, wardrobe ensemble. She doubles the utility of this black denim tabula rasa jacket by wearing it as a knee length duster style jacket. The inseam pockets are top stitched to the front to prevent it from flapping when worn. Thanks, Carrie. We have Edith Ann Deleska from Minneapolis St. Paul chapter. And Edith Ann got her inspiration to design her applique elephants from the white block print on navy, hand stamped in Mizoram State, India. Using the print and Mizoram colors, red, green, yellow, and brown, she sketched her applique patterns. An artist scientist friend purchased the fabric in an eco-conference trip to help her improve water quality in this primitive remote location of Northeast India. Construction of the ensemble was done beautifully by ASG Minneapolis member Pat Swanson. Thank you so much, everyone, for doing that very well. Next, we have Laura Nash from the Willamette Valley chapter in Oregon. With dominant fabrics, a simple style is the best recourse. So using the Southern Bell pattern from Laura's So Chic brand, the layout was planned with fade to black skirt taking up most of the border edge, a little left through the mid-drift and back, and there was nothing else to do but graduate the dots from back around the sleeve to front. Everyone needs a challenging fabric to stretch their skills. Next, we have Elisa Roberts from the Maryland chapter. This black and white pinstripe suit, inspired by designer Jonathan Simka, was worn by Michelle Obama during her recent book tour. The self-crafted jacket has been adapted to copy design details like a widened sleeve hem, belt trim added to the sleeve, hook and eye front closure, and white piping detail added to the lining. The pants are also Alyssa's go-to pants, Simplicity 2860, and the fabric is a Ralph Lauren stretch wool purchased at Mood, New York City. Thank you. Next, we have Kathy Healy, Rochester, New York chapter. 
Kathy's wearing a classic t-shirt dress by Pamela Leggett from Pamela's Patterns, one of our vendors. She chooses a wool jersey knit in her favorite color for the dress. Pamela's Patterns are designed with the most com common fit alterations built in, and Kathy used the full bust option to achieve a great fit. Accents along the neckline were created by twisting strips of fabric into circles. Kathy receives many compliments wherever she wears this dress, and I can see why. Next, we have Patricia Kwasniewski from Princeton, New Jersey. Pat's blouse is a vintage Madeira linen that her neighbor generously gave her from her mother's estate. I want neighbors like that. <laughs> she found the linen in pieces, so she needed the pattern to fit the puzzle. Vogue 8772 fit the bill. The seams are done in French seams. Small vintage shell buttons are used to finish the front, and adding a sheer cotton flam flounce attached with the entredeau method, so she can wear this blouse tucked in or with a flouncy flare. Thank you so much. <laughs> Next, we have Linda Lee, Kansas City, Missouri chapter. Linda's wearing the Tremont jacket from the sewing workshop in a luscious shade of red orange silk shantang with a lining of beautiful asparagus green china silk. Show us that lining. Good going. She hand stitched a Sashiko Lotus to stitch design on her jacket in lovely shades of silk embroidery flosses and has completed her ensemble with a beautiful West End pants in a pork like gold silk. Linda made this jacket for our ASG conference. Team taught class contemporary Sash Sashiko jacket by Linda Lee and Nancy Schreiber. <laughs> and who would be next but Nancy Schreiber <laughs> from the North Virginia chapter. Nancy's wearing a Tremont jacket from the sewing workshop line in a soft muted teal dupioni silk lined with a vintage peach Japanese kimono. I want to see that kimono. Gorgeous. The jacket is hand stitched, Sashiko style, in an all over hemp leaf design in a steel color coated cotton thread. This garment was made for the Team Talk class contemporary Sashiko jacket with Linda Lee here at conference. Nancy chose a fluid four-ply gray silk fabric for her Valencia pants. Another pattern from the sewing workshop line. Gorgeous, thank you so much. Next we have Olivia McCoy from the Kansas City, Missouri chapter. Olivia is 12 years old and has been sewing for two years. at the Kansas City Sewing Academy, she completed this dress by herself, selecting the fabric and the pattern. The fabric is from Sew English and is a double brushed poly. The Be Dreamy pattern she selected is from Ellie and May. This dress is maxi length, featuring a high-low hemline with a lined bodice and an ampere waist. Give us another twirl and thank you so much for being here. we have Bonnie George from the San Jose, California chapter. Bonnie used this 8, 1989 simplicity pattern, 9110, so 1989 is actually the year, <laughs> to make the culottes for a Mediterranean cruise in June. They have a flat front waistband with elastic in the back, a favorite detail of hers, along with deep pockets. The inner leg seams have a flat felt finish and a full flat felt finish on the side seams due to the bulk of the pockets. Bonnie lined the garment with cotton batiste. Oops, she hadn't pre-shrunk it. Do over. <laughs> but it's all well. It looks good with her cargo duffel bag. That I forgot. <laughs> Next, we have Virginia Emerson from the Boston, Massachusetts chapter. Virginia's got a fan club. Virginia's pink interlock knit is Connie Crawford's Butterick 5212, and she made it with no alteration the very first time. She's paired it with a Sandra Betsina Today's Fit Vogue 7027 pant. The flared leg shows off this fantastic retro print cotton perch purchased at Rizo Creative Sewing in Lincoln, Rhode Island. 
She also used drapery header for an extra stiff waistband. So with quilting cottons, because life is too short for all solid colors, and they're washable. <laughs> Next we have Sherry Dowd from Central Savannah River, South Carolina chapter. <laughs> Sherry's jacket ensemble is derived from a Bo Vogue 7975 using her Chanel shortcut method she teaches here at conference. There are many Chanel-isms evident including braids from fabric yarns, metal buttons with the fabric surround, and hand-sewn buttonholes and chain weight at the hem. Coupled with her bias cut panels, panel print silk georgette, wow, that's a mouthful, <laughs> and her classic pleated linen cotton tweed pants with V-front waistline and pleats definitely give this a Hollywood style. <laughs> now we have Ivory T. Jones Acti from Maryland Chapter. This is T's tribute to Audrey Hepburn's Little Black Dress. <laughs> T used Vogue 1102 from her very large pattern collection and did a full bust adjustment on the bodice. The fabric is stretch taffeta purchased online from Fabric Wholesale Direct. The full circle skirt is three thread rolled hem and was done on her baby lock serger. The edges of the bow in the back were also finished with a three-thread rolled hem. The first time she made this dress was six years ago for a bunch of other people in a bridal party. <laughs> and she always wanted to make one for herself. I'm glad she did. Now we have Sharon Murafa, sorry, Murutsa. Oh. Marufas, sorry, from the Los Angeles, California chapter. This blue, this blue with lace overlay dress may look like a mother of the bride dress, but it's actually a flamenco dress. Sharon is a flamenco dancer and flamenco That's what I get for screwing up her name. Flamenco dress fits close to the body, but have full skirts and lots of ruffles. The sleeve must also be able to move freely for the dance. Sharon enjoys dancing and sewing for her flamenco hobby. You may remember her deep red dress from last year. Yes. This deserves a big ole. <laughs> Now we have Gail Yellen from the Connecticut chapter. Gail is wearing the Stitchy Zen tunic from J. Stern's Designs in an IT uh, white poly light road knit. The tunic has on seam side pockets with a bullet neckline and a, sorry, ballet neckline. <laughs> and a banded hemline which adds weight for good drape. Stitching Zen with Gail and Jen is an online annual subscription class that includes an exclusive pattern line featuring pattern layout, cutting, fitting, construction instructions, and pattern hack and embellishments for each pattern to make each garment your own. Next, we have Kathy Dacey from the Boston, Massachusetts chapter. <laughs> Kathy made this christening gown from an imported Swiss nylon. The hair heirloom gown features a stunning lace over jacket made of Swiss laces and attached to a bed of silk organza. Puff lace sleeves are gathered with a lace insertion to weave pink or blue ribbon through. There's a hand embroidery of feather stitch and bouillon roses done in flush. Multiple layers of measured tucks, lace insertion and pin stitch, and delicate self-made piping around the neck, sleeve, and the bottom yoke of the dress. This is a Gail Doan of Utah Designs. Thank you so much. <laughs> Next, we have Douglas Wendt from the Madison Wisp 
Wisconsin chapter, this shirt is an unlikely partner. It partners a casual shirt and denim with men's suiting material. The lightweight rustic denim used for the sleeves, hood, and pocket was overdyed orange and features a flat lock stitching and discharge writing that was part of the original fabric. It's a, all pulled together by orange con contrast stitching. The pattern is an Island Sewing Systems Baja shirt 214. Douglas has been sewing for five years, but only doing garments for nine months. Let's hear it. <laughs> We have a wonderful duo. <laughs> we have Diane Sandler and Robert Welvin. As you can imagine, Diane starts months in advance to prepare for the Halloween party season or for her ladybug costume. She used an old pattern for the polka dot jumper, but added the red lace around the armholes and legs, which she wears over purchased tights. Her wings are stiffened with foam and she applicated large black dots on the red shimmer lycra. Inside her hood, she has fabric color covered antennas. And then... Okay, guys, we've got 75 more words to go ahead. With photos of praying mantises, Diane started molding arms from pool noodles and foam to form the body to fit over Rob's green lycra jumpsuit. Extra arms were hand-stitched to the body and covered with green lycra. Rob fashioned his wings with wire and covered them with green netting. The head is more like a helmet to allow Rob to see and dance. At this point in the process, a zipper was added to allow Rob to sit, to drive, and or, well, answer nature's call. <laughs> Can you guess who won best costume last year? We have Niall back, Niall Mendoza Wilson from the Central Pennsylvania chapter. Niall's back with the evening version of her 1885 House of Worth gown. The gown is transformed by replacing the tail bodice with a matching ballroom bodice and train. The bodice has been altered most significantly from the original pattern with changes such as adding a back lacing closure, a cold shoulder and shelf bra. This was the perfect stash clearing project for Niall. And I don't know about anyone else, but I sort of aspire to have a stash like that. <laughs> now we have Linda Dutcher from North Jersey chapter. Linda has not sewn for herself in a long time, but wanted to take full advantage of the good times here at ASG conference. She decided to take the challenge of making a reversible garment, especially when she found the two-sided quilted fabric. Her vest is a combination of view A and view B for her vest. Pretty cheeky for someone who hasn't been sewing for herself lately. <laughs> now we have Diane Woodrow from the Boston, Massachusetts chapter. Diane created her pattern from a ready-to-wear ensemble reversible jacket. She found her fabric on a trip to New York and it spoke to her for our ASG conference challenge. She quilted the white and navy print fabrics together with a simple straight line stitch. She even made her own bias tape from the white fabric for the French seam finish. This jacket is perfect for a cool summer night out on Boston Harbor. <laughs> We have Gail Simpson from the Louisville, Kentucky chapter. And now, Gail, having participated in a similar challenge in her own chapter previously, Gail was having trouble coming up with a new idea for conference. She chose a textured linen blend fabric from her own stash and used French views on each piece. Using a pattern called My Favorite Pattern, she made the longer peplum style and added side seam pockets and a back pleat. She also made the shorter peplum and added embroidery. Aww. 
The peplum snap on and off, so she has three different looks according to which peplum and which mood she feels like she's in. <laughs> Next, we have Carrie Emerson in the Maryland chapter again. And Carrie's denim shirt dress was crafted from the tabula rasa jacket pattern from Fit for Art. The spread collar shirt pattern was lengthened to create an above the knee dress. Inseam pockets were added to the forward side seams. And the sleeves were also modified with the cuff and a placket. The shirt dress closes with vintage metal buttons featuring a floral filigree. Carrie wears the shirt dress with a reversible OB belt to shape the waist. Thanks, Carrie. <laughs> and now we have Marie Lucier from the Central Savannah River, South Carolina chapter. Marie's wearing a raincoat from Fit for Art's Tabula Rasa jacket as well. Rain or shine variation. Made use of uh, materials used is a silk bra DWR fabric from Seattle Fabrics with alterations made to the sleeve and garment length. The fit's great and very comfortable even when driving. It has an attached hood with a custom, custom reversible zipper going all the way up to the hood. The bronze side has two pin tucks, pockets, and a navy side has a side seam pocket. Next, we have Mary Mahaney from the Boston, Massachusetts chapter. <laughs> Mary's the wallflower. <laughs> Mary's wearing a cocoon kimono ASG simplicity pattern 8091. Made from a specialty fabric which allows enjoyment of cool summer breezes without the mosquitoes, you should see the show. You should see the night need arise in this garment can transform to a PPE, which is personal protective equipment. <laughs> which will protect from disease-bearing mosquitoes and can also reduce the wearer's exposure to cancer-causing UVA and UVB radiation, up to 40%. It's light and durable and can easily be worn. <laughs> It can easily be one's fashion statement for many years of walking through the world. <laughs> Next, we have Chris Toll from the Charlotte, North Carolina chapter. The reversible jacket Chris is wearing is the Gail Patrice Designs Counterpoints jacket. It's made of iridescent taffeta, the colors of which were chosen to reflect the one if by land and two if by sea theme. The changing color of the land taffeta represents the shores of Chris's native Rhode Island and the red clay of Chris's adopted North Carolina home. <laughs> the sea taffeta represents, well, obviously, the Atlantic Ocean. <laughs> Next, we have Marie Haynes, Brandon, East Bay, Florida chapter. Yay! Marie's reversible garment is a polyester crepe fabric that has two sides. She used Simplicity 8687 shirt dress view C that can be used as a duster coat. It's a two for one. There was also enough fabric to make a reversible dress as well. But Marie is wearing a simple sleeveless dress, Butterick 4545, made out of gold mini dots, a crepe woven fabric from Marcy Tilton. This dress proves to be a lifesaver in the warm Florida weather. Lolita Cox is next from the Minneapolis-St. Paul, Minnesota chapter. So Liberated's metamorphic dress fills the bill for our One If By Land and Two If By Sea conference theme. It morphs from one dress into another. The dress bodice has large armhole openings conducive to layering. The front bodice is shorter than the back bodice and gives the, high, the waist a high-low appearance. That's not all that's appearing. <laughs> Both dresses have pockets, one inseam and the other patch. <laughs> Lolita 
Cornelius fabric was a gift from one of her neighborhood group members. Isn't ASG great? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Next, we have Orly Airgang, North Jersey, New Jersey chapter. <laughs> Orly is wearing a fleece jacket that has a nylon rainproof lining and a separating zipper. She made this jacket for her son or husband or, well, whoever liked it most. <laughs> Orly had decided it was time to start sewing for someone other than herself or her daughter. When they go for a walk on a windy day, this jacket can be worn with the fleece side out, and if a sudden thunderstorm shot, I'm sorry, pops up, it can be quickly turned nylon side out. <laughs> now we have Patricia Malone from Sumter Lake County's Florida chapter. Patricia's wearing a raglan sleeve jacket, which is the perfect addition to your wardrobe. Its reversible styling allows the pairing of two fabrics for added contrast. The con the Front neckline may be turned back to create a lapel look, and the sleeves may be turned up to reveal the contrasting lining. Heirloom techniques were used to create this three-pocket style. This jacket was completed in a Martha Pullen Technique searcher certification class. The main fabric is a linen blend, and the lining is a cotton print. Next, we have Melanie Dumas from Central Massachusetts, Massachusetts Chapter. This box style jacket was created from a McCall's pattern and was designed by Melanie to be reversible. Each side of the jacket has bias trim in the reverse fabric and closes on both sides. They offer a different form of loop and button closures. One side of the jacket's fabric may be considered tame but the other side is wild. I think we'll all be able to tell Melanie's mood when she wears this jacket. <laughs> Next, we have Denise Carlson from Central Massachusetts chapter. Denise is wearing a lavender jersey knit, short crop, J. Stern, easy fit, and sew, twin T cardigan with feather stitching at the neck, hem, and center back. Perfect with the dress for those cool evenings out to wear with, to dinner with the husband. She dress is a self-design with a cowl collar using a double brushed black polyester. Moisture wicking sports knit, changing it up. She also has designed a crop jacket of black and gold brocade, which would be perfect for a Broadway show. <laughs> Now we have Vicki Klons from Green South, uh, I'm sorry, Greensboro, North Carolina chapter. On top, Vicki's wearing a purchase jacket from Dragonfly Dye Works. <laughs> Vicki's also wearing her Quick and Eaties ladies vest under her cut-up kimono jacket, peeking out as additional lapels. The jacket is fat, quarter-friendly, and uses a chenille technique to make the lotus blooms on the oversized pockets. The vest is made up of sample squares and strips in reversible cotton fabrics and features a twisted spiral rose embellishment. It can also be closed differently to reveal pockets shown here with the paper bag skirt. Thank you much. <laughs> Next we have Carol Coleman from the Dayton, Ohio chapter. Not a traditional sari, this full-length dress has small embroidered elephants throughout and along the lower front with a drape at the shoulder from the periwinkle border of the sari fabric. The wrap dress is easily removed for a casual outfit. Carol has made her... Go girl. Carol has made the casual dress sleeveless with the straight skirt version and the border at the hem and shoulder. The periwinkle drape also doubles as a shawl. She's ready for land and sea in this silk dubioni outfit. Next we have Julia Lanin, Bucks County, Pennsylvania. 
And we have, on a recent ASG shopping trip, Julia found this sewing-themed laminated fabric and decided it would be perfect for a hooded rain cape. She used Simplicity Jiffy 6630 hooded poncho with the front snap closing and, she, and flapped patch pockets. Notice the snap fasteners at the sides to form the armhole openings. The red side is made from a recycled poncho, and you can bet that the rain will never keep Julie away from a good fabric sale. <laughs> now we have Lynn Walls from the Boston, Massachusetts uh, chapter. You know what was on the other side? <laughs> you may remember Lynn is the proud to live in Massachusetts, and made this reversible dress by McCall 6102 to celebrate the great state of Massachusetts. This side of her dress is a tribute to the wonderful seafood that you can enjoy in the area and throughout the state. If you haven't already done so, make sure you get your share of seafood before you leave the area. It's a treat you shouldn't miss. Do, do I hear jingle bells? Oh, it's Santa Claus! ASG member Louise Servick created this suit to meet Santa's specific needs. It's velvet with a rayon lining and detachable fur for ease of cleaning. The grain ribbon belt loops hold the extra wide belt and the vintage buttons, a gift from Mrs. Claus. Have detachable shanks to keep them from to keep the buttons pristine when not in aww. <laughs> The drawstring pants have elastic loops at the bottom to keep them in his boots, and the white poet shirt has back gathers to allow for plenty of movement during chimney drops. <laughs> David is one rockin' Santa. <laughs> he just told me that I was still on the nice list. <laughs> Okay, now we're going to have one more walk with all of our models. They're going to be holding their numbers up so you can look for them in the uh, program and you can vote for your challenge favorites. And thank you much. And here go the models. <laughs> 